Back we're uh, on our path through uh, the set of topics and uh, today's topics uh, are going to continue to cover state diagrams and we're also going to talk about activity diagrams. I just wanted to review very quickly that um, in this course we, uh, we used uh, a number of different types of UML uh, diagrams Right. Uh, the, ear the earliest uh, type of UML diagram was a uh, use case, uh, use case diagram, uh, and use case diagram typically represents uh, a set of actors, right, and they have access to specific use cases, and use cases appear uh, inside bubbles, and we model. Uh, use cases uh, through use case diagrams. So they help to visualize at the high level of what's going on inside a particular use case um, and uh, not, uh, not inside a particular use case but uh, visualize the entire collection of use cases supported by the system. So then of course uh, we realize that uh, inside each use case we have something that we need to we need uh, uh, some sort of understanding so we said uh, that class diagram uh, helps uh, class diagram basically shows classes as boxes with attributes and methods and we specify certain relationships between these classes and we connect them to visualize the structure, right? So um, uh, this is sort of like a, a procedural uh, view of the system. Uh, that's our use case diagrams. And class diagrams uh, basically is a structural uh, view uh, of the system. So, uh, so continuously we went ahead and said that uh, uh, we can actually do more uh, in terms of analyzing activities inside particular use case uh, with specific, uh, with, you know, with respect to specific classes that we choose to implement it. And we came up with, uh, and that's, that's our beginning of the analysis, uh, analysis of the system, uh, we said that uh, there we can use a sequence diagram where basically we take, uh, in, in, we envision instances of our classes and uh, create these t um, uh, lifelines for these instances and then we say that they can start interacting and uh, the, that type of interaction can be visualized with a sequence diagram. So sequence diagrams are very effective when you try to uh, basically analyze and verify your use case design, whether it's complete, whether you have enough uh, structure support for, you know, to, to, to implement the use case. But additionally, sequence diagrams can, ha uh, can help to debug, right, debug uh, uh, problems. Uh, sometimes uh, you already have a bit of an implementation and if you um, are able to produce sequence diagram that can help you out to uh, you know have a pretty pretty decent understanding uh, regarding what's going on and if you have particular issue to work on the sequence diagram can be of big help so sequence diagrams are really important all right, uh, so uh, we, we just say that uh, is basically um, uh, the, the sequence diagrams allow you to analyze your use cases for whatever purposes, but also allow you to visualize interaction between individual uh, instances of your classes, the individual objects in memory, right? So that's, they stand somewhere in between those two because they're all related to one another. So sometimes we can have objects with interesting behavior. Right here we can have an object which basically has an interesting life cycle and goes through different stages from its creation uh, to one state, another state. Um, it may accumulate some information, uh, you know, and its behavior may be dependent on the information that it has. 
right? So how, do, how could we analyze and formalize that specific behavior of a specific object? And so today we're going to cover, um, you know, in depth, uh, basically, the idea of a state diagram. So if the, the object goes through the life cycle of uh, uh, changes, updates, and uh, important, uh, you know, important attributes affect its behavior. We say that it would be uh, it would be feasible and advisable and effective to actually uh, analyze uh, a set of states which appear just as bubbles uh, somewhere and uh, decide uh, what state transitions are. Uh, you know, acceptable, uh, and then we can basically, you know, model this type of behavior uh, by an analyzing those state transitions, right? So we have different states. Uh, typically, the states are giving um, IDs like state zero, state one, uh, state two, state three, state four, and we can basically um, analyze the types of transitions. Right. While doing with this um, analysis, uh, we can specify that, uh, for instance, uh, transition from state zero to state one is legal, whereas uh, transition from state three to state, state four over here uh, does not exist. Right? So essentially, we can build a table of transitions that are acceptable in the system. So typically, you want to uh, support uh, your diagram by, a, by uh, essentially a table or description of uh, available state transitions, because some state transitions are not available. So uh, uh, typically, just as use case diagrams have to be accommodated by descriptions, but by real story that explains what really is taking place inside a specific use case. Similarly, uh, a many, in many ways, uh, the design of the state diagram, although it's very brief and also very effective, at the same time needs to be supported by uh, a list of state transitions and possible additional information about these transitions. What type of additional uh, uh, information? Uh, for instance, sometimes you can have a condition, right, uh, which essentially triggers condition, a condition like this, may trigger specific uh, uh, transition. So therefore, we may also come up with yet another table which, which we can describe as, uh, you know, events, um, events that trigger transitions and basically describe each event and 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 equally uh, specify uh, you know describe all conditions that uh, that constitute that specific event and then we have uh, uh, correspondence from these events to specific conditions because because different events will be causing different transitions right so we can des describe transitions what they really mean in terms of the life cycle of the object and we also can describe yet another mm, uh, you know provide another set of information which provides uh, provides a list of events that actually trigger those uh, conditions Events in this sense are sort of interchangeable with uh, conditions because uh, sometimes um, there is no event. It's just basically a certain variable or certain object uh, signals you that it's time to make an update. Uh, and that basically transitions from, you know, transitions your object from a dormant state into an update state, and then, you know, it may uh, go through stages of certain transaction um, and then go back to dormant state, right? So uh, it could be conditions, or it could be uh, a user pressing a button or clicking a mouse or, you know, flipping the screen if it's a touch screen and so forth. So, Events can be external, user, 
user driven or it could be events internally uh, generated by the system uh, in terms of uh, conditions changing but you can also have a background background processes which may signal periodically uh, certain conditions um, uh, or certain you know call certain methods which will be triggering uh, those uh, straight tra state transitions in certain objects so today this is our you know main focus is state diagram so state diagram is the fourth type of diagram that uh, I would say, uh, you know, uh, with uh, uh, together with the use case diagrams, class diagrams, uh, sequence diagrams, right? So the, this this was our depiction of the sequence diagram right here, and so this is the state diagram. Uh, together with uh, additional information, is uh, is going to be our focus today, and that's what we're going to discuss today, uh, going back to the uh, presentation. And our presentation handout for today is just going to be continuation of this, uh, you know, the set of topics with respect to uh, sequence and state diagrams. Uh, they're basically merged into one presentation here because they again help out to analyze use cases. So it's 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 very typical to think about sequence diagrams, which represent interaction between multiple objects, and also state diagrams, which represent uh, dynamics within, you know, in in terms of life cycle of one single individual object. Uh, state diagrams can be put together for multiple objects uh, interacting together, right? Uh, but they're less effective because their complexity you usually uh, skyrockets very quickly uh, because you have so many different states to analyze and uh, it, it depends what your problem domain is but uh, usually state diagrams are most effective with um, uh, with um, uh, just individual single objects and so our slide here to uh, uh, is going to be uh, the basically a conversation about state diagrams and state machines. All right.